Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is February 19th, 2024. This video is called Warning to the Mountains of Israel. I have 12 introductory points and I want to go through those quickly. Pay close attention and then I will come into the actual warning which uh, will be fairly lengthy. It may take up to two videos or possibly even three. I'm not sure. Um, the 12 introductory points are these. Number one, the mountains of Israel are God's glorified overcomers. Number two, they are the man-child of Revelation chapter 12. Number three, they will rule the entire earth with a rod of iron. Number four, they have not been glorified yet. Number five, they can still sin until they are glorified. Number six, therefore it is possible that they can still lose their crown of life, according to Revelation chapter 3, verse 11, even though in that passage Jesus says he is coming soon. I believe Jesus is coming very soon. I believe that it is imminent and in fact believe it will happen within the next six weeks. I could be wrong. Uh, time will tell. Number seven, this video contains God's present warning to the mountains of Israel in order to help them secure their crown of life. Number eight, I myself received this warning directly from my Heavenly Father in a personal letter from Him 15 days ago. I described that several videos ago. You can uh, look that up. Number nine, I heard his word to me through that letter. Number 10, I was grateful to receive the letter. Very, very grateful. Number 11, I repented of the sin that God exposed in me. And number 12, my father forgave me and healed me. Now listen to the word of the Lord concerning his warning to the mountains of Israel. In order to help you understand and make sense of this prophecy, of this word of the Lord, I'm going to take you to an old prophecy from the prophet Ken Vischer. He issued this in around the year 2011, and it's... Um, in his what's called the Epistle Mysteries series. It's actually chapter 73, and it's called The Walking Lake of Fire. I'm going to read only the first vision that he had that is in that writing. The writing is uh, extremely uh, profound. I put a link to these writings and previous videos, and I'll try to remember to put it in this one too. I really encourage you to read this particular video or, or read this particular writing because it will add uh, incredible insight to you. And I think as I explain this vision to you today, that you will be convinced beyond any reasonable doubt that Kenneth B. Vischer is a true prophet of God that God has used mightily in the earth. I actually communicated with Ken yesterday that the Lord had shown me uh, what this vision was about and he was, I think, pretty surprised. I'm going to start now just by reading the vision. It's a very short vision and then I'm going to explain it and the explanation will take quite some time. First vision. The Lord revealed then from behind his hand a great evil come upon the earth, an evil as such as has not been seen nor known in magnitude before in world history, an evil that was nearly the equivalence of those who would have perished in the flood of Noah. It was not disclosed to me exactly what this evil was, but it was a happenstance that will soon take place upon the earth and in the midst of the nations. Now remember, this was t around 2011. Ken 
did not date his writings and visions because the Lord told him that they were to be timeless. And indeed, they are timeless because the letter from my father that I have referenced was something he wrote somewhere between 20 and 30 years ago, and he doesn't even know when. And that letter was delivered to me 15 days ago, and it was like God just wrote it to me. I'm going to read the last line again and continue with it. It was not disclosed to me exactly what this evil was, but it was a happenstance that will soon, soon take place upon the earth, remember 2011, and in the midst of the nations, so that a man can number his days and repent of all they have done, which is an affront to the Lord. As such, the time is short for this. It is about to happen and may already be happening. And for those who are known of God, the need is great to be contrite and repentant as this evil takes place from under the hand of the Lord. Many people are now becoming disillusioned by what they believed to be true, both in man's politics and in their personal religions. Those established things are now being shaken and will succumb to this evil which the Lord will bring. End of the first vision. Now I'm going to explain this vision, and as I do, I will talk about how this affects the mountains of Israel. I'm going to read the last line again because I want to focus on a word. Ken said, the very last line of the vision, many people are now becoming disillusioned by what they believed to be true, both in man's politics and in their personal religions. Those established things are now being shaken and will succumb to this evil which the Lord will bring. I want to focus on that word succumb. The word succumb means to fail to resist the pressure of temptation or some other evil force. The failure to resist temptation or some other force. So it's a warning to resist. Now I will begin the interpretation. Number one, and this was the surprise to Ken, this evil which the Lord himself causes to come, and remember it comes from behind his hand, must surely be COVID-19, which sprung upon all nations at the end of 2019. Remember the beginning of the prophecy says that it will arise soon. It will take place upon the earth and in the midst of the nations. Suddenly COVID-19 was everywhere, every country in the world and it all began. Now I want to go through this very particularly because you have to wake up. You have to understand what has happened. An entire response to COVID-19 was already well prepared and waiting in the wings to be implemented when the deadly disease was released. Those included lockdowns, masks, tests that infected with the disease, closure of many businesses, especially food service, limitation of travel, forced vaccinations that maimed and killed many, health protocols mandated upon doctors and hospitals that killed people instead of healed, healed people, the forced withholding of medications like ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine, that helped to heal COVID-19. The United States military actually forced all of its servicemen to take the vaccination. The United States paid for the vaccination for all people who, in our country who would take it. Money was dispersed just freely to help others who were inconvenienced by COVID-19. And then we've had a regular release of new strains to keep 
the public in constant fear and panic ever since this came to our attention at the beginning of the year 2020. Now, what are the results of COVID-19? First, COVID-19 alone can kill a person because it often causes SARS, Sudden Acute Respiratory Syndrome, SARS, which prevents a person from breathing, from being able to breathe. COVID-19 has what they call a spike protein that turns on and keeps on mucus production in order to drown your lungs and kill you. And COVID-19 is easily passed, very contagious. I did not take the vaccine, but I caught COVID in uh, 2021 at the end, right after Thanksgiving. And within two months, two and a half months, I developed what is called long COVID symptoms. So COVID-19 often produces long COVID in those who caught the disease. Those symptoms include these, and this is not all, but these are symptoms I personally had and still have to a, some degree. Myocarditis, tinnitus, stroke, heart attack, blood clots, chronic fatigue, brain fog. And of course, I could add death. I think it will add death to this because people have died. Moving on, COVID-19 and all the propaganda associated with it convinced most of the world's population. Now remember, according to the prophecy, it was released in the midst of the nations. It appeared everywhere at once. It was totally pre-planned. COVID-19 and propaganda convinced most of the world's population to take the poisonous vaccination that was even more deadly to most people than the COVID itself. Things that happened to them were things like long stringy hydrogel blood clots that killed them outright, destruction of their organs, quick deaths of fetuses and newborn babies, introduction of nanobot technology into the body that communicates wirelessly with machines outside the body, even when the body is dead, an introduction of nanotechnology into the body that can be activated and controlled by outside technology such as 5G. Second major point is this, is that this evil is an evil that God brought from behind his back. First, he said it was almost equivalent to the greatest evil that ever came upon man in all of Earth's history, and he specifically named Noah's Flood. If you've been watching my videos, I have been saying for a long time that the COVID-19 planned pandemic is the very worst thing that has happened in the world since Noah's flood and that we are at a situation that is like Noah's flood. And if that, and if God does not act, no flesh will survive. Noah's flood killed all of mankind, except for eight souls. COVID-19 and its vaccine have killed untold millions, perhaps billions, and many more millions and perhaps billions remain very sick and fearful today. There was no escape from Noah's flood. There is no escape from covid If God does not act and shorten the days until his second coming, then no flesh will survive, as Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 24.
Now, why did God bring COVID-19 upon the earth? The reason why God brought the flood upon the earth was because all flesh was corrupted in his sight. I believe that's exactly why he brought COVID-19. Because all flesh on the earth is corrupted in his sight right now. If we look at the Matthew 24 signs that Jesus gave us, we will see just how corrupted we are, how corrupted all flesh is in the world today. I'll go through these signs now. First, Jesus says there will be false Christs. That's 24 verse 5. There will be false prophets. 24 verse 11. There will be lawlessness. 24 verse 12, the love of many will grow cold, 24 12, and there will be the revealing of the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place, which is man's heart. Your heart, your inner man is your holy place, and that's where the abomination of desolation stands, and it stands in the heart of most people. It does not stand in the heart of the overcomer. It's possible that it can, and that's why this warning is going out to the Kodeshim, to the overcomers, to the mountains of Israel, so that if the abomination of desolation is in your heart, that you can deal with it now, so that you will make it. Jesus says that what is coming, he warns us, he warned us 2,000 years ago. And then this vision that Ken received, I believe, is a vision concerning this warning. Jesus said the greatest tribulation ever seen in the world, ever, even greater than the flood, greater tribulation than the flood. For the flood was over quickly, and people died suddenly. Suddenly, instead of in great agony over days and months and years, as they do now. That's Matthew 24, verse 21. The greatest tribulation in history. No flesh will survive if these days are not cut short, Jesus says. Matthew 24, verse 22. He says there will be a rise of false Christs and false prophets to lead astray even God's elect, if possible, in Matthew 24, 24. These false Christs and false prophets do great signs and wonders. So, he warns us, do not go out looking for the real Christ. Don't, don't do it. You don't have to do it. Don't go anywhere. Don't think that somebody has an anointing you don't have. And don't go looking for somebody else's anointing. Don't go running after strange fire. <clears throat> you will see the real Christ because he will be as visible as lightning that shines across the entire sky from east to west. Think about what lightning looks like when it happens. You know it. You will see... Christ when he returns. Don't go out looking. But vultures, vultures, vultures are demonic-minded men who eat dead flesh, not Christ's living flesh and blood. These vultures will travel far and wide to gather at the corpses of living and dead false shepherds, prophets, and apostles. I know a particular pastor and his wife who traveled all the way to New York just to take his pulpit there so that some so-called prophet could pass his spirit onto that pulpit. That strange fire that is witchcraft. There's now word of people doing what's called grave soaking by lying on the graves of people they think are great prophets. Prophets like Bob Jones. Bob Jones had a prophetic gift, but he perverted his gift just as Balaam did.
Third major point, the purpose of COVID-19. Now this is where I really began to get into the warning for the mountains of Israel. Because I believe that the, the main reason COVID came and I believe the reason that I myself caught COVID and I had to catch it three times, three times, three times you're out unless you don't get out the third time. Fortunately, I didn't get out the third time. That was when I finally understood. That's when I finally got it. The purpose of COVID-19 is so that the overcomer, the Kodeshim, the man-child, will repent of Job's sin. Did you know Job sinned grievously, utterly grievously? Throughout this entire two-week time period, literally the whole two-week two time period, God has been revealing to me what Job's sin is and what Job's sin was to him. What it is to me, because I had Job's sin, and that's, that was what had to be dealt with. I had to repent of Job's sin, and it was shocking, utterly shocking. And it's, it is shocking, and God continues to bring revelation to me about it. I was up all night again last night for about the 15th day in a row. I've gotten about three hours of sleep a night, and he gave me revelation that I've never, ever understood before and it concerns Job's sin. So I am now going to begin to expound upon Job's sin because the purpose of this vision, this first vision of the walking lake of fire by Kenneth B. Visher, the purpose was to expose Job's sin in the mountains of Israel. Now listen, 